Hey guys, John from Gutenberg Research here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use my book, Financial Modeling for Equity Research, to build earnings models for yourself, so stay tuned. Okay, if you haven't actually ordered the book, you can get it on Amazon.com, and you can get it as a ebook or you can get it as a paperback. Both versions are identical. Uh, it doesn't matter what you choose. They both come with the Excel files, and that is the key. So after you get your book, you can register at gutenbergresearch.com, click on the book registration tab, type in your Amazon number and the email address where you want us to send your access details to, and then we will give you access to this template download page. This page has a blank model that you can use to start your own model. Um, it also has all of the models that are covered in the different chapters. So if we go to the book for a second, you can see in chapter two, which is the section where you actually start to create your own model, um, starting with step one, you pick what company you want to cover, and then in step two, you get into actually updating the blank model template to meet your needs for whatever company it is. So you start with aligning the headers to the reporting, um, the reporting dates of the company, and then from there you fill in the historic details. Uh, and it just goes through step by step. So that's in, in chapter two. And if we go back to the template page, in chapter three, we cover a more complex model. So it's what I call a tier two model. Now, in the example that we use in the book, Apple Inc., this means we're breaking down the earnings by segment, or in this case, actually by product. So we list out each of the products that Apple has, and we estimate an average selling price for each product, and we actually estimate the number of products sold. So I'll show you that model here. So Apple Tier 2 model, you can download it just by clicking this thumbnail. It'll pop right up. And, um, and you can see how it works. So all of these models are color-coded. These are the same format as our other Gutenberg research models, which are available on our website for free. So blue cells represent our primary estimates. Purple cells, that shows if we've actually calibrated a cell to meet cons company's guidance, management's guidance. And then the orange cells represent the consensus estimates. Then the headers are color-coded as well. So the dark gray columns represent the historic actual results, whereas the light gray columns represent the forecast future period results. Um, and if you're new to modeling, this will all make sense as you go through. But essentially how it works is you start with the income statement in the top section. And then you have assumptions down below, which feed up into the income statement in the future periods. So in this case, we have some estimates for iPhones in this section here. So you can see that I'm applying a year-over-year -year growth rate to the total number of units to get back to a projection for the next quarter of units sold. So in this case, in this model, I'm projecting 41 million units sold for the June quarter. And I'm expecting an average selling price of $650 per phone. And when you multiply the $650 by the total number of units, you get the total iPhone revenue. And then if you do the same exact process for all of their products, and you sum that together, put it in your net sales and your income statement, then you have the top line revenue, and you can just work your way down the income statement in for the rest of the model. Uh, and this is what the book goes through. So um, it's pretty easy to follow. So that is the tier two version of the model, just the income statement projection, in chapter four, we cover the tier one version. So this is the version that I actually use in equity research. Uh, it is all the three primary financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, and it, they're all interrelated. So when you change your earnings estimates, the balance sheet's going to change, your cash flow statement's going to change, they're all tied together. Then in um, chapter six, I go through the uh, estimates that you would use to get to a discount rate. So this is using the equity risk premium to calculate a required return on equity. Uh, so you, well, the capital asset pricing model comes into play there. Um, there is, in the example that we use, we use a constant sharp approach to calculating the equity risk premium. And um, so I go through, since the constant sharp approach uses volatility estimates and interest rates, I go through how to analyze the um, Fed's minutes and the Fed's, the details that the Federal Reserve discloses so that you can project out what uh, interest rates are going to be and incorporate that into your equity risk premium um, uh, assumptions. 
So keep in mind, if you're new to modeling, that might be a little bit more complex for you. If you're just comfortable with a tier two model where you're actually just projecting out the number of units sold and the average price, that's fine. You're still gonna come up with an earnings estimate for the next quarter or the next year. Uh, and you can still use a market multiple based valuation to do that. Now, if you have all of the financial statements forecasted and you're doing a tier one version of the model, so that means you've covered all the way up to step 14 in chapter four, then you can actually do a discounted cash flow valuation. And I show you in chapter seven how to apply those metrics to come up with a discounted cash flow valuation for your company. Uh, if you don't, you'll just skip down to chapter eight and you can use a market-based multiple against your earnings estimate if you're doing a back of the envelope basic financial statement model or if you're doing just a tier two model. Then in chapter nine, at, at this point, you would have a full model um, already built, and that's up to um, step 32. So in chapter nine, I'm showing you how to actually use your model. So you can run scenario analysis or sensitivity analysis. Uh, that's usually what you would do ahead of earnings because you never really know. So in the, in the case of Apple Inc., you never really know how many iPhones they're going to sell or what average price. So you always want to take your model and run some different scenarios if they you know i was projecting 41 million iphones sold for the june quarter if they sold 45 million wouldn't you want you want to know what the impact would be or 55 million what the impact on earnings would be so you just change that number to 55 million and you could either keep the average selling price the same or change that as well and you'd see instantly what the impact is on earnings for the next quarter so it's a pretty useful tool once you have the dynamic model built um, you can also use it to analyze the guidance and the consensus and see where the consensus estimate stands relative to management's guidance. That's always useful. It's something that I like to do ahead of earnings. Uh, it just talks about, in general, how to prepare for earnings. And then after the earnings release, how to update your model. Because obviously you need to constantly maintain your model as new results are released or new information is released about the company. Then in chapter, or in the appendix, I show you how to incorporate regression analysis. So. Most analysts don't actually use regression analysis because things tend to change over time. And if the, um, if the product mix or any other item changes over time, then regression analysis kind of gets thrown out the window because you're assuming that historic results are going to repeat in the future. So um, it's very difficult to use regression analysis, but sometimes you can use it to project maybe just like one input or just give you something else to think about um, in your results. So it can be useful um, to some extent. So that is the book. Now I wanna show you how you can actually use the book and the blank model template to create a model for yourself. So if you go back to the Gutenberg um, page and click the blank model template download button, you'll see that I've set this up as a tier one version of the model uh, because it's easier to delete things. So if you're not comfortable with projecting the balance sheet and the cash flow statement, there's no problem there. You can just go down to those sections and just delete them. It's, it's just that simple. Um, but if you do, if you do want to keep it, then you would just maybe freeze the panes here and then you can get started. So what you want to start with is step two. So let's go to the book. And this is exactly how you would do it when you decide in your company that you want to cover. Uh, you can skip the chapter one. That's just the background information. Go right to chapter two, getting started. So now let's say you've chosen a company. Let's say you want to model earnings for Alphabet Inc. So you can go to the SEC website and go get their historic results. I usually do it in the interactive data. It's a little bit easier to see bring up the financial statement, and then maybe we put this on the left-hand side of the screen, bring up the blank model template over here, and now all you want to do is just go through the book and it'll tell you exactly what steps you need to perform. So step two, after you've chosen your model, you need to align the headers so that they correspond to the financial reporting periods. So now we go back to the SEC page. So now we want to put in June quarter here. So three months end June quarter, so that's the second quarter. Um, this is actually aligned pretty well. So we would just go to the corresponding period, June 2017. So in this case, we would put our results here. And all we have to do is run down the income statement and change the account titles here, and then type in the numbers here. 
once we finish with the historic results, just keep moving through the book. So this is all about filling in the historic information. And notice that I've carved some sections out in gray. These are my experiences when I was in equity research or pitfalls, things to watch out for when you're modeling or frequently asked questions that we get from our interns in our financial modeling program. All these things are carved out in gray, so they'll kind of help you as you go through the process. So that's generally how it works. That's how the book works. Um, you know, be sure to check out our webpage if you want to download some of the models that we've already created. And you can also check out some of the models that our contributors have, um, have posted with uh, their assumptions. It's pretty useful information as you go through. And uh, good luck with your model.